Welcome to Exact Education. The purpose of the experiment is to explain the operation of a series RLC circuit and explain the importance of resonance. We have a 200 ohm resistor. Resistor converts electricity to heat, controls current flow. Inductor coil 4.7 millihenries stores energy in the magnetic field around it. Capacitor stores energy in the electric field between the plates. Coil, capacitor don't do work. They store energy. What we're interested in this circuit is the resonant frequency that we've called FR. If you look through the theory, there's a calculation that you can work out from theory, from your L and C value. We can work out that the anticipated resonant frequency from this circuit is 23,215 Hz. The purpose of this circuit is a tuned circuit. What do we mean by a tuned circuit? A tuned circuit is a band pass filter. It will only give an output such as the voltage across VC when we get a very narrow band of frequencies. The smaller the bandwidth, the higher the Q factor. And what we're looking for in tuned circuits is a high Q factor so that the circuit only responds to a very narrow band of frequencies. If we look at opposition to current flow, we can plot out our XL and XC values. XC is linear, so as we increase the frequency, the opposition to current flow from the XL from the inductor responds in a proportional manner. It's a linear process. However, with the capacitor, there's a one over effect. So it forms a hyperbolic curve. If we measure impedance, reactance XC against frequency, as we get higher and higher frequencies, there's a one over effect so that the opposition to current flow from the capacitor becomes extremely small. However, when we go down to very low frequencies towards DC, effectively the capacitor blocks DC because the XC value goes to infinity. The combination of XL and XC being linear and non-linear results in a bathtub effect for overall circuit impedance Z plotted against frequency. And what we get is a particular frequency that we call the resonant frequency where the opposition, the overall circuit impedance Z is minimized. Now at that particular frequency the only opposition to current flow is from the resistor in the circuit. So what we'll note here is it doesn't matter the value of resistance in this circuit for resonance, it does matter for the, the quality, the Q factor and bandwidth but it doesn't affect the resonant frequency. Only the XL and the XC values define the resonant frequency. Why? When we get XL at the particular frequency when XL and XC are the same value, they're always opposite in phase, then they cancel each other out. And that is resonance. And we get a maximum value of current in the circuit and we get a maximum voltage out of our capacitor. So we get maximum response for a particular tuned frequency. If we see what we've set up at the moment, zoom in, what we've got on the function generator is 10 volts peak to peak. We've set it on the 100k, 100 kilohertz scale. Uh, the frequency is turned down here at the moment and we've got a, a low impedance output of 50 ohms and it's set to a sine wave. What we've got coming out on the oscilloscope, if we zoom properly, I apologize. What we have coming out is 5 kilohertz signal. What we're measuring, the yellow one is V in, the purple one is V out. So what we've got on the input is 10 volt peak to peak and what we've got coming out at this particular frequency over the, the voltage across the capacitor is we've got a very similar voltage coming out. Why would that be? 
if we do the calculations on a spreadsheet, if we do the calculations on a spreadsheet, we can see at 5 kilohertz what we get out is a voltage across the capacitor that's virtually the same as what's going in with very little phase shift. Why is that? That's because the voltage across the inductor is extremely small. It's down towards zero. And what we expect from theory is when we get the XL and XE values to have the same value which is based on these calculations is XL and XC what we see there at a particular frequency we get XL and XC working out to be 686 ohms now that particular frequency we are predicting from theory is 23.215 kilohertz so what we'll do now is we'll increase the frequency we'll increase the frequency gradually we get increase the frequency up to approximately 10k what we see here is the capacitor voltage in increasing capacitor voltage still dominates the circuit because we still have a fairly large value of XC at 10,000 Hz which dominates the circuit if we turn the frequency up to say 15 approximately 15 kilohertz approximately 15 kilohertz then we're getting a larger and larger voltage across the capacitor the value of XC at 15 kilohertz is still approximately a thousand ohms so the capacitor is still dominating the circuit but the opposition to current flow from the inductor is now getting bigger and bigger it's approximately half the, the capacitor one now so we've now started to see significant phase shift if we increase again to say 20 kilohertz we're getting a larger and larger voltage coming out of the capacitor the values of XL and XC are coming closer and closer together uh, they're, they're up in the five six seven hundred range they're not exactly equal yet so we're not at resonance if we increase the if we increase the frequency again what we want to see at resonance the voltage across the capacitor will be delayed lag exactly 90 degrees with respect to the incoming voltage so what we are looking for here is the particular frequency where the peak of VN aligns in time which is aligning in phase with the capacitor voltage crossing the zero axis we're not quite there yet uh, the peak value so we're looking vertically down uh, go I would say resonance is there depending on your eyesight so we're talking on the in terms the resonant frequency in the physical world is measuring is 23.7 kilohertz which does match closely with the theory value of 23.2 kilohertz if we increase the frequency more then we get more and more phase shift now what, what's happening now if we keep increasing the frequency to say 40 kilohertz why, why is VC now completely out of phase with VN and it's a lot smaller so what we've got now is the dominant impedance in the circuit is the XL value which is now above 1000 ohms so what we're now getting is that the phase shift is, is getting towards 180 degrees out of phase so the purpose of this circuit is resonance so when we get a frequency of particular value VC is delayed 
delayed 90 degrees after the VN, approximately at that point there, maybe a little bit, a little bit there, it's, yeah, it's probably just a little bit down from there, I would say, yeah, no, we've gone too far, yeah, there is resonance, the voltage across the capacitor is delayed 90 degrees, so at that point the voltage across the inductor, the voltage across the capacitor are equal in size and opposite in phase, they cancel each other out. So what then happens is there's an effective short circuit across the inductor and capacitor, that's, that's the effect at resonance, such that the only opposition to current flow is from the resistor. So if the voltage lags by 90 degrees from a capacitor, what would happen if we swap over the inductor and the capacitor, what we should see is the voltage across the inductor, the coil, being 90 degrees ahead, exactly 90 degrees ahead of the capacitor voltage. So what I'm now doing is swapping over the position of the capacitor, position of the inductor in the circuit, and measuring it, and what we now see is the voltage being very large across the inductor, so we've, we've, we've got resonance again, we've got peak, and the, and the phase shift is 90 degrees leading. So if we compare V in the small, smaller yellow sine wave, we compare the larger one, what we can see is when the larger one is at a peak, we're crossing the zero axis on the VN, uh, going negative to positive. So what we've now got is a leading 90 degrees phase shift. So what's happening now is the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage across the inductor are equal in amplitude. It's actually gone off scale. It should be from theory approximately 34 volts peak to peak. We've gone off scale in the oscilloscope but the phase shifts are minus 90 from the capacitor, plus 90 from the inductor. These voltages cancel out and we get peak current because the cumulative voltage across the inductor capacitor taken in series is zero. So effectively the L and the C become a short circuit at that particular frequency and we have what we call resonance which is peak output. Thank you for watching.